joining us. Hope everybody stayed dry on their way in. Okay, we are opening up our 8, uh, 8.30 agenda for the Committee on Water and Land and Energy Environmental Protection. Thank you to Chair Lowen for allowing us to have this hearing. We're going to start off with HB 755 relating to aquatic nuisance species. We have first up uh, Chair Chang for DLNR. Yes. Good morning, Aloha Mai Kako, Chairs Ichiyama and Chairs Lowen. Thank you for the opportunity to prevent, present our testimony. We support this measure and we stand on our written testimony, but are available to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have testimony from CGAPS, Christy Martin. Aloha mai, Christy Martin with the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species, CGAPS. Uh, thank you so much for hearing this bill. We wanted to summarize, we have our very long letter. We wanted to provide all of the uh, details for those that were interested. But in summary, uh, the Division of Aquatic Resources doesn't have the authorities that they need to be able to um, enforce uh, a federal law that passed in 2018. Uh, incidental discharges, and those are things like ballast water biofouling, as well as sediments that can be attached to anchors and anchor chains and then anchor chain lockers. There's a whole list of, of 20 or so incidental discharges. Uh, when this law passed, it allows the state to regulate or co-regulate uh, when, um, when those incidental discharge rules finally go into effect. So this would allow the state to be able to do that. Um, they would have full authority over those. They currently only have authority over ballast water and biofouling in these particular rules that they have. Uh, the other reason that we want to do it this year, and we actually need to do it this year, is because of the stony coral tissue loss or scuttled disease that is present in Caribbean reefs. Uh, we have found, not we, but the greater scientific community has found that this disease uh, can kill a, a wide variety of corals. It can travel in ballast water. It can travel uh, as biofilm. That's the slime layer before biofouling. We are assuming biofouling can carry it, but it was also found to be carried by sediments. And again, those are things that DAR doesn't currently have authority over. And right now we're working on administrative uh, emergency rules for DAR, and all they can do is suggest that vessels manage that um, pathway, those vessels that are coming from stony coral tissue loss disease region, which is around Florida, Caribbean area. Um, so it's important that we pass this. It, it, it will help in two ways immediately as well as uh, down the line with, with VITA. Mahalo. Thank you very much, Ms. Martin, for your testimony. That's everybody who signed up to testify on House Bill 755. Anyone else would like to offer testimony on this measure? Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to House Bill 1079. Uh, this <coughs> bill is relating to water pollution control. And first, we have testimony from Department of Health. Good morning, chairs, vice chairs, and members of the committees. My name is Daryl Lum. I am the acting chief at the Department of Health Clean Water Branch. The Department of Health strongly supports HB 1079. This bill adds and revises necessary definitions for consistency with federal regulations. This bill aims to consolidate water quality certification requirements and existing exemptions. The proposed changes do not make any substantive changes to the regulations and requirements of the water quality certification approval process, and this includes the existing exemptions for the small-scale beach nourishment projects and for the traditional Hawaiian fish ponds. The proposed increase to the maximum statutory civil penalty will provide consistency with the federal penalty amount. The proposed penalty increase for obstructing, denying, or hampering the entry of authorized Department of Health inspectors will ensure consistent penalties in both air and water matters. Also, the increased penalties will deter potential violations of water pollution law and remove any economic benefit gained by violating the law. Thank you for this opportunity to testify, and I'll be available to answer any questions. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your testimony. That's everybody who signed up to testify today on House Bill 1079. Is there anyone else who would like to offer testimony on this measure? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, we are going to recess the nine, uh, I'm sorry, recess the 8.30. Turn over to Chair Lowen. Oh, thank you. 
right, now we are convening the 8.35 a.m. agenda, joint uh, committees on energy and environmental protection and committee on water and land. It is Thursday, February 9th, 8.35 a.m. in room 325. And first on this morning's agenda, we have House Bill 1052 relating to climate change. This establishes the Climate Impact Special Fund, um, gives it an appropriation and uh, five cents of the barrel tax to help fund it in the future. Um, first up on this, we have the Office of the Governor. Morning Chairs, Vice Chairs, Blake Oshiro, Senior Advisor for the Governor. Uh, we stand on our written testimony in strong support and I'll be available for any questions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And the State of Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. Aloha Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committee. Leah Laramie on behalf of the Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. We stand on our testimony in support and available for questions. Mahalo. Thank you. And Hawaii Emergency Management Agency in support. Hawaii Green Infrastructure Authority in support, Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Good morning, Chair Lowen, uh, Chair Ichiyama, members of the committee, Vice Chair Poipoi, Poi, Vice Chair Cochran. Cochran. Um, we stand on our testimony in support and just note that the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development is a co-chair of the Climate Commission. Thank you. Thank you, and DLNR, Chair Chang. Good morning, <laughs> Chair Lowen and Chair Ichiyama, members of the committee. I do apologize that our testimony was submitted late, but we stand on our written testimony, which is in strong support of this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tax Foundation of Hawaii on Zoom. Okay, not present. Kauai Climate Action Coalition in support. Hawaiian Electric on Zoom. Not present. Uh, Nature Conservancy Hawaii in support, Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. And we have additional testimonies, three in support, six in opposition, and two with comments. Um, it does look like some people were planning to be present on Zoom. We have uh, Harold Adams on Zoom, not present. Abe Matsuoka, not present. And P. Lani Watkins, nope. Okay, is there anyone else here to testify on this measure? If not members, any questions? Great, if not, we will move on um, to the last bill on this agenda relating to water neutrality, House Bill 1212. This establishes a water neutrality task force to develop a plan for Hawaii to become water neutral by the year 2050. And first up to testify is Board of Water Supply. Good morning, Chair Lowen. Cherry Chiyama and members of the committee. Um, the board of, I'm, my name is Kathy Mitchell. I'm with the Board of Water Supply, and we stand on our written testimony in support. But the BWS requests adding an amendment to subsection D to include the manager and chief engineer or the manager's designee from each county board or department of water supply, each or a. Um, it's up to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. And DLNR. Good morning, Chair Lowen and Chair Ichiyama, members of the committee. Don Chang with the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, we did. We um, we are offering support for this with some amendments, and the amendment is to specifically have the Water um, Commission on Resource Management instead of the Department of Health oversee the task force. And we have coordinated that with the Department of Health, and they are in agreement. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii in support and additional uh, seven testimonies from individuals, two in support, five in opposition. Anyone else here to testify on this measure? If not, members, any questions? All right, if not, we'll recess for decision making.
Good morning. We are reconvening our 8.30 agenda uh, for the purposes of decision making for the joint hearing on water and land and Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. First up, we have House Bill 755 relating to aquatic nuisance species. Uh, the chair's recommendation is to defect the date to June 30th, 3000, as well as technical non substantive amendments. One of the members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair. Voting on House Bill 755 with amendments. Um, chair Ichiyama? Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Representative Chen? Aye. Representative Ganadin? Aye. Representative Hashim? Aye. Representative Morikawa? Aye. Representative Takayama? Aye. Representative Souza? Aye. The chair's recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much, members. Uh, same recommendation for the Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. Members, any discussion? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Uh, voting on HB uh, 1052. Chair pass, uh, elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Noting excuse absences of Rep Gates and Rep Ward. Members, are there any voting no or with reservations? Seeing none, Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is House Bill 1079 relating to water pollution control. Chair's recommendation is to pass out a House Draft 1 defecting the date June 30th, 3000, as well as technical non substantive amendments. Uh, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair. Voting on House Bill 1079 with amendments, noting all members as present, are there any no's or reservations? Seeing none, the Chair's recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Same recommendation, Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection. Members, any discussion? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Voting on HB 1079, Chair uh, elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Noting, again, excuse absences of Rep Gates and Ward. Members, any um, anyone voting no or with reservations? Seeing none, Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you. Thank you. We'll adjourn the 8.30. And we are reconvening the 8.35 a.m. agenda. Uh, first up, we're gonna vote on House, uh, for decision making, we're gonna vote on House Bill 1052 relating to climate change. Uh, recommendation is to make some amendments to this. Um, first, we need some technical amendments um, for clarity, consistency, and style. We will add some language on, on page three, lines 17 to 18, and page six, lines four to six, where it says the purpose of the uh, Funding is to carry out the purposes of the commission. We'll add language that just says, and to fund efforts to mitigate and adapt to climate change, just to clarify that. And then um, we will note in the committee report that the sea level rise voluntary relocation special fund doesn't currently exist, but is the subject of other bills being considered this session. And then we will defect the date to June 30th, 3000. And uh, that's all members, any discussion? House Bill 1052. Seeing none, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Okay. <laughs> Voting on HB 1052, Chair elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Noting absences of Rep Gates and Ward. Members, anyone voting no or with reservations? Seeing none, Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you, over to Waterland. Thank you, Waterland members, same recommendation. Any questions? Okay, Vice Chair. Voting on House Bill 1052 with amendments. Noting all members as present, are there any no's or, or um, reservations? Seeing none, the Chair's recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. All right, thanks. And then next up we have House Bill 1212 relating to water neutrality. We're gonna make some amendments to this as well. So technical amendments for clarity, consistency, and style, we're gonna Adopt Board of Water Supply suggestion to add a designee from each county's department or Board of Water Supply. And then we will adopt the various suggested amendments of uh, DLNR, including moving this task force to um, be led by the Commission on Water Resource Management, extending the date from 2024 to 2026 for the final report and the sunset of the um, task force. And then we'll add a blank appropriation section and then we'll note um, in the committee report the suggested amount for the appropriation is 500,000 and affect the date to June 30th, 3,000. And uh, that is all. Members, any discussion? 
If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Chair voting on HB 1212. Chair elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair both vote aye. Excuse absences of Rep Gates and Ward. Members, anyone voting no or with reservations? Seeing none, Chair, your measure is adopted. And thank you, Waterland. Waterland, same recommendation. Members, any questions? Okay, Vice Chair. Voting on House Bill 1212 with amendments. Noting all members as present, are there any no's or reservations? Okay, seeing none, the chair's recommendation is adopted. Great, thank you, and we are adjourned. Thank you.
to uh, welcome back everyone. We are convening uh, the 9 a.m. agenda of the Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection, Thursday, February 9th, conference room 325 and via video conference. Um, I'll go through our testifier list and then I'll back check at the end. I know we just had a false, uh, false fire alarm, so there may be some people trickling in who missed their chance, so we'll make sure we can give people a chance at the end. Uh, we're, first up, we have House Bill 194 related to efficiency standards. Um, this is adding to our um, state level appliance efficiency standards. And um, first up is the State of Hawaii Climate Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. They may, may be returning. Hawaii State Energy Office. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. We have our testimony with comments. I'm Maria with the State Energy Office, and we are here to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, DLNR. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, and committee members. Kaleo Manu, Deputy with the Water Commission. We stand on our written testimony in strong support of 194. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have Office of the Governor comments, uh, Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers in opposition, um, Hawaii Energy, Chester. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Chester Carson for Hawaii Energy. You have a written testimony. We stand on that and are here for any questions. Thank you. And Lulupono Initiative in support um, we have the Appliance Standards Awareness Project, uh, Brian Fady on Zoom. Not present. And then Plumbing Manufacturers International on Zoom. Hi there, good morning. Uh, Kyle Thompson with uh, Plumbing Manufacturers International. And we've, we've submitted written testimony for HP 194 I would like to just point out a couple of the comments that were submitted to uh, to iterate a little bit of uh, the importance of um, first in the section three two um, it the new text appears to permit the chief energy officer to increase efficiency standards without any public input at all. And such a change like that would have a pretty significant impact on our product. And so the proposed revision that we've, we've submitted is to uh, open, the, open the changes to 45 day uh, public comment period. And the other item that I'd like to draw your attention to that's uh, that all of the comments are important to us, but these two are, are what the two that I want to draw, draw your attention to is in section 6B, the existing text is unclear as, as to the meaning of the term new product. And the, the concern is that um, a, a consumer buying a product off a shelf would say, if it's boxed, it's new. From the manufacturer's perspective, a product that comes off of the line manufactured new is new. When it when it's when it's coming off of the manufacturing line, so in order to clarify uh, that we we'd like to incorporate language in the bill that states the manufacturer the manufacturing date is the date of the new product, and the other the other comments that I've included in in the testimony that was submitted, I'm here to answer any questions that might come of that. Oh, I apologize. One other item that was not included in our written statement is under section 511 for the water coolers uh, the energy star program uh, requirement it's referencing version 2.0 and i just want to let the committee know that uh, version 3.0 has become available it was uh, effective in march 23rd 2022 so uh, a friendly suggestion is to update that reference to version 3.0 standard thank you thank you um, let's see, I'll backtrack back to State of Hawaii Climate Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. 
Hello, hi, chairs. Uh, members of the committee, uh, Leah Larry, sorry, I just walked up the stairs. Uh, Leah Larry with the Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. We stand on our testimony and support and here for any questions. Mahalo. Thank you. And then next up we have uh, Blue Planet Foundation. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Jody Robinson of the Blue Planet Foundation. We submit a testimony in support of this bill. Energy efficiency is really important for us to not only meet our climate goals, um, but also to reduce energy use. And it would result in a significant savings of utility bills for local residents and businesses. It's really a win-win situation. Um, happy to answer any questions about the bill. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have the Home Ventilating Institute. Uh, on Zoom. Good morning. Um, I did submit, my name is Elisa Scheuer. I'm here on behalf of the Home Ventilating Institute. And we did submit a written comment from the CEO of HVI. Um, but we did submit it this morning. And so if, you get, if I could, I'd like to have a couple of minutes just to go through our testimony, just in case the members haven't been able to see it. Um, the Home Ventilating Institute, also known as HVI, is an ISO compliant certification body and trade association representing over 100 manufacturers of residential ventilating fans worldwide. Those familiar with this legislation already know HVI because it's HVI's airflow test procedure that's the proposed testing standard for residential ventilating fans in the bill before you today. You may not know that HVI operates a certified product directory on its website where it provides energy efficiency information for more than 3,600 residential ventilating products. HVI lists only those products which have been tested in ISO approved laboratories using the HVI airflow test procedure. HVI is not just a listing service, it also verifies the test results using a third-party lab accredited in accordance with ISO 17025. Uh, each year, HVI selects 10% of each of its member products in each category for verification, and as an accredited certification body, it's accountable to the American National Standards Institute. As the premier certification body for residential ventilating fans, HVI offers comment on the certification process and the labeling requirements in House Bill 194. Under Hawaii's current law, and here I'm talking about HRS 196-88, um, any product listed in California's modernized appliance efficiency database system is deemed to meet Hawaii's certification and labeling requirements for regulated appliances. The bill before you does not change that. However, in the case of residential ventilating fans, the California database lists not only fans that comply with Hawaii's proposed standards, but also products that don't comply. And we propose a clearer method of determining which products meet the new state standards. Um, under that same provision, um, the law says that the certification and labeling programs of other states can establish compliance with Hawaii's requirements. Um, and as an ISO accredited certification body of residential ventilating fans, HVI is uniquely positioned to communicate compliance with Hawaii's new standards. HVI's testing procedure is already the testing standard in the legislation before you, and HVI maintains a certification and labeling program, which is already referenced by the state of Vermont. HVI requests that the bill be amended to explicitly recognize its certified products directory as an acceptable certification and labeling program in Hawaii. If you make this change, HVI will add a field to its directory for directly determining Hawaii compliance. So if a regulator or a consumer needs to know if a fan meets Hawaii standards, he or she need only search the product's model number and the directory will provide a clear yes or no with regard to Hawaii standards. I invite you to check out HVI's certified product directory and the link to the database is contained within the testimony that we submitted to your committee this morning. I apologize for the, uh, the late submission, but we would be glad to discuss these matters further should you have any questions. Great, thank you. And let's see, next we have the Board of Water Supply. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, members. Uh, Ernie Lau, Manager-in-Chief Engineer for the Board of Water Supply. Uh, we strongly support this bill, which allows the Chief Energy Officer of the State of Hawaii to enforce minimum efficiency standards. Saving water is also saving energy. And like the bill points out, the less water people use, 
through water conservation, through greater efficiency, that's the less water we have to pump out of the ground, which requires electricity, uh, lots, lots of electricity. So mahalo for your consideration of this bill. Uh, we support its uh, adoption. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and then we additionally have testimony from 12 individuals in support. Is there anyone else here to testify on this measure, Ted? Good morning, Ted Bolin, on behalf of the Climate Protectors Hawaii. Good morning, Chair Lowen, Vice Chair Cochran, and members of the committee. Uh, this bill is a great idea. Appliance efficiency standards make sense. They save electricity, they save costs. They're in, the, the, the uh, appliances are in place for, for a long time and over the course of the life cycle, there's a lot of savings for the customer as well as for the, uh, for the to avoid waste as, as uh, Mr. Lau was just saying. So please pass this bill, it's, it's a good idea and we ought to do it, thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone else here in person or on Zoom to testify on this? If not members, questions. All right, I, did you have a question? Okay, I'm just waiting for you to say. I can make up a question. No, no, I have a question if you don't. <laughs> I'll go first, then okay, you can think you about, first. then you'll have a follow-up, I'm Thank sure. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I think I'll start Ener Hawaii State Energy Office. Uh, just to clarify this uh, pretty straightforward question, I think this would give you power to do rulemaking to adopt additional um, appliance standards, but the rulemaking process does include opportunities for public input. Yes, it does. By law? Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm just, uh, so the, I think the, the, plum, the gentleman from the Plumbers Association was saying um, there would be no public input, yeah. but I think there, there would be. The yeah, the mechanism could be included in the rules. Okay. Um, Thank you for that clarification. Uh, we'll let you know if we have questions. Thank you. Um, and then thanks, thanks, Maria. Then I think um, for Blue Planet Foundation, can you explain a little bit um, how, you know, we worked with your organization on this bill? Yes. And um, also with the, you know, through some national organizations that study appliances. And I think we really tried carefully to select appliances that. Um, the cost benefit, you know, there was some testimony we had also mentioning something about the need to do a cost benefit analysis and the impact this could have on affordable housing, which I think was a little maybe misunderstanding what's actually being done in this bill. Um, can you talk a little bit about the appliance we, we did select for this and what the kind of payoff period is in, term for the, in terms of the consumer and also um, uh, additional upfront costs, if any? I, mean, I think some of them might not have any. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair, for the question. Um, the appliances selected in this bill are basically mirroring other, other standards across the nation, so many states have already adopted this. As far as the specific list of appliances, there's seven on this list. Uh, five out of the seven have no incremental cost, meaning that they cost the same to purchase as the more inefficient appliances, and you're gonna see savings right away. The two that do have an upfront additional costs are um, air purifiers and portable electric spas, so that's like portable hot tubs. Those do have an additional cost. Uh, the payback period for those are six months. Um, so after six months, customers will start savings. And addressing the kind of affordable housing question, um, the, the idea of this bill is to target new sales of appliances. So it's not a requirement um, by any means. It's just when people are uh, looking to purchase a new appliance, it would be the more efficient a product that is available. And I hope that it would be nice for affordable housing to have portable electric spas, but I don't think that that's probably what they're considering um, when they're building new housing. Great, thank you. Members, other questions? Uh, to the energy department, please. Efficiency. Uh, my first question was censored, but how would you rate the energy efficiency of this building? And where would you start? But, oh. Uh, I know that points the finger at us, yeah. but I, I may yeah. get ruled out of order by the chair on that, so I'll just leave that as. Sometimes we freeze or we yeah. sweat in this building, is my point. Oh, yes. Because it's all or none. But we, the, we agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, the, the question I had, though, is air conditioning, air conditioners included in this efficiency? 
I saw it listed, but I didn't see, I mean, I didn't see it listed. I saw a list of other things. The gentleman has uh, an answer to that. And why not is it not listed? Good morning, Representative. The answer is that most appliances are covered by federal statute, going all the way back to 2006, I believe. These appliances are only ones that are not covered by federal statute. And if the federal statute says X, we must abide by X. How about gas stoves? Uh, same thing. Same thing? Yeah. Okay, so this kind of gets us up to speed with what's going on at the federal level. Yeah, the, these, these provide additional efficiency measures. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Any further questions, members? Okay, if not, um, we'll move on to the next bill on the agenda. Uh, also, relating to energy efficiency, this um, prohibits the sale of certain fluorescent lamps that contain mercury as a new product with certain exemptions. First up to testify is uh, State of Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Leah Laramie with, on behalf of the Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. We stand on our testimony in support and are available for questions. Mahalo. Thank you. Then we have Department of Health in support. Good morning, Rep Lowen, Re Vice Chair Cochran, and members of the committee. Diana Felton, Hawaii Department of Health. We stand on our testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have uh, Hawaii State Energy Office. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Maria Tome, Hawaii State Energy Office. We support this bill with um, great enthusiasm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, County of Hawaii, Department of Environmental Management in support, Hawaii Energy. Good morning, Chair Lowen and Vice, Cochran, or Vice Chair Cochran, Chester Carson for Hawaii Energy. We stand on a written testimony in support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Blue Planet Foundation. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Jody Robinson, Blue Planet Foundation. We did testimony, uh, submit testimony in support. Uh, like the previous bill, this is another important energy efficiency measure targeting the sale of new fluorescent bulbs um, in the state. And we have projections or estimates that this uh, legislation alone in 2030 would save $37 million of annual utility bills. So significant savings for a relatively um, small switch that we could make for new sales of bulbs. Thank you. Thank you. And then the Appliance Standards Awareness Project. Are they on Zoom now? Nope, not here. And then we have additional uh, 14 uh, individuals that submitted testimony all in support. Is there anyone else here to testify on this measure? Well, Please Chair, come Mr. forward. Chair. Let us know your name and uh, supporter, oppose, or comment. I'm Matt Geyer. I'm in support. Um, this is fluorescent bulbs are one of the many things that are being sold in the state of Hawaii that don't have a safe way of disposing them here. So this is a low hanging fruit, and thank you so much for supporting this measure. Thank you. Ted Bolan on behalf of the Climate Protectors Hawaii and the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. For the Climate Protectors, we are concerned about saving energy, which this does. For the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition, we're concerned about the fact that the fluorescent bulbs contain mercury, many of them, and it's a hazardous waste that gets in the landfill. So we've moved on to a better technology with LED, and, and we should adopt this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all the testimony I have on my list. Is there anyone else here to testify on this measure in person or on Zoom? If not, members' questions, Rep. Ward. Thank you. Uh, Ted, could you come back, please? If you look up, what do you see? Fluorescent bulbs. Uh, the, these are the fluorescent ones that this would take care of. Or is it all of them, or some of these are? I think, I think a lot of, I, I don't know whether these bulbs contain mercury. I, I do think that the, we're talking about new sales. So it's replacing, when you, when you replace uh, fluorescent bulbs, you can get an LED bulb that doesn't have the mercury and it's more efficient. Does anyone here know what kind these are? are they, I mean, in the, in the old days, they were. Sergeant of Arms is not here, I guess. <laughs> and they're not testifying. But in the old days, session. anything that was a tube was a fluorescent light. So I suspect this may be uh, in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, really uh, quickly, Department of Health, can you just uh, 
for the you know benefit of anyone watching and committee members, just tell us about some of the harms of mercury. Yeah, uh, absolutely. When it gets into the environment, I think a lot of of mercury containing bulbs imported into the state probably aren't saved and collected on hazardous waste day. They probably just go in people's trash cans more often than not. Absolutely. Mer mercury is a persistent environmental contaminant. The way most people are exposed is through fish. It bioaccumulates in fish. So enjoying your ahi or especially your higher uh, trophic, what we call trophic level, level fish, you end up with a significant amount of mercury, particularly harmful to the developing brain. So we worry the most about pregnant women and developing fetus and young children who are exposed to mercury. Um, it causes developmental problems, issues with uh, school later on, and growth and development. So very significant to the point where for years um, the Department of Health has had advisories on how much fish and what types of fish pregnant women should eat to try to decrease their mercury consumption. So definitely something in our uh, heavily fish eating culture that we really need to pay attention to and decreasing mercury in the environment would be a, a really good step forward in helping decrease those exposures. Great, thank you so much. Any further questions members? All right, if not, we will move on to House Bill 441 relating to climate equity. This uh, appropriates funds to develop a database and data portal uh, to um, provide social vulnerability to climate change data in Hawaii. And first up to testify is uh, Leah, State of Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. Hello, Chair. Chair Lohan, Vice Chair Cochran, members of the committee, Leah Laramie with the Climate Change Mitigation Adaptation Commission, uh, sent on our testimony in support, um, also with the recommendation of directing these funds um, to the uh, University of Hawaii at Manoa um, to carry out this research continued on from the work that they did in collaboration with the commission. Um, available for questions, mahalo. Thank you. And the Hawaii Department of Health, Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Diana Felton, Hawaii Department of Health. We stand on our written testimony in support of this bill um, with a special emphasis on the value of a tool like this in helping us compete for competitive federal funding opportunities, especially with the uh, initiation of the Justice 40 initiative. And this would, kind of tool would be very useful for us in showing how our work is impacting um, socially vulnerable communities. Happy to Thank answer you. any questions. And then the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency with comments on Zoom. Not present. Uh, Blue Planet Foundation. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Jody Robinson with Blue Planet Foundation. We strongly support this bill. As the impacts of climate change intensify, we know that our low and moderate uh, income residents, indigenous residents, Keiki Kapuna will be more vulnerable to some of the climate related impacts. Uh, we think it's important to create a resource that'll cent centralize and aggregate data so that as we move forward to address climate change, we can do so in a way that takes into consideration who the vulnerable populations are and make sure that we are approaching our solutions from a lens of equity and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, Energy and Climate Change Committee of the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party in support. Imua Alliance in support. And then we have additionally 12 testimonies from individuals in support, six in opposition. I do have uh, Matt Geyer, you listed to be here in person. Please come forward. Aloha, Chair Matt Geyer, member of Hawaii Environmental Change Agents, testifying as an individual standing in support. Thank you. That is everyone who submitted in advance. Is there anyone else here to testify on this measure in person or on Zoom? All right, if not members' questions, Rep. Ward. May I? Yes. Uh, Blue Planet, please. You mentioned the magic word. You didn't say it, but Alice families are the most social impact. Give us an example of the social impact of climate change on the Alice families. Certainly. Um, for an example, if we have an extreme storm that comes and, you know, wreck someone home. Um, Atlas families probably have uh, less financial resources to be able to rebuild or relocate if necessary. Um, there's also a lot of human health impacts of climate change, things like increasing heat that might have a disproportionate impact on um, elderly residents that are on a fixed income who can't necessarily afford to install air conditioning in their homes or, or relocate to a home with better ventilation. So this will be a 
comprehensive database to find that out. But then what will you do with the data is the question. Well, I think um, there is national census data that kind of identifies which populations are more susceptible. What we need or what some of the Climate Commission work has done, and I would defer to them, is um, they've kind of done an analysis on what, what, what populations are most susceptible to, to climate change, and they've um, come up with a recommendation that we need to do a big, large database. The idea is to collect data, essentially, so that when we go forward and do uh, planning, we can do so collectively in a way that addresses the needs and identifying. So you're not um, sure what people. they do with the data other than collect it right now? I mean, the well, implication is, hey, your house is, uh, is a double wide trailer in West Virginia, and you get it blown away like it happened in Syria and um, yeah, I think it's Syria with the earthquake. You find out that that's a target population. What do you do with that data? In, in other words, when you see the social impacts, what do you do with the data to change it or help it or whatever? I'm trying to see the so what part of the, the bill. I think this is a first step to, to answering that so what question. Um, figuring out who is most susceptible to the impacts of climate change, having an online website that's easily accessible by members of the public, but also decision makers to look forward so that when we start to approach some of these long-term solutions, um, we know who who is most vulnerable. And it's not just the Alice families. It'll it'll disproportionately impact a lot of different communities. Look at um, Native Hawaiians, right, and some of the cultural loss or forced <coughs> displacement that we're seeing with migrations happening around the Pacific Islanders. Will it so. include the millionaires who have their beachfront house with the Tesla in the garage that goes into the ocean? If they are susceptible to sea level rise, it would identify them as someone who might be affected. But then it's up to decision makers to decide how are we going to, you know, allocate resources to help or really, and I think the target of this is to help the people who are most vulnerable yeah. and who really don't have the financial or social capacity um, to, to adapt as these impacts intensify. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, just uh, for our own edification, I guess the same question to Climate Commission, uh, Climate Coordinator and Department of Health following that, just to quickly, what, how would some of this data be used? I yeah. think you guys are, have, some, have some other answers too. Mahalo, yeah, as my colleague from the Department of Health mentioned, you know, this data will really help us to identify the areas that we need to direct resources to. So, um, as you mentioned, um, Rep. Moore, that there are certain communities that are, you know, beachfront homes that have the resources to address. So it's not just looking at where climate change is going to impact, but also overlaying those social vulnerabilities so that we can identify, all right, these these areas are going to be impacted by climate change, and they're also less capable of a, of um, addressing it themselves. So we uh, can. Sorry, I'm, I'm on my. I'm asking questions. Oh, sorry. Still. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Directing and the then the same right. question for Department of Health. Just uh, you mentioned federal grants. So what kind of federal grants might yeah. this help to uh, us to apply for? Yeah, really. And any federal money at this time is now requiring um, at least 40% be directed to uh, socially vulnerable communities through the Justice 40 Act. Uh, initiative and um, so a quick example um, we recently applied for and were successful in um, receiving money to replace uh, drinking water fixtures at schools um, but it required that we prove that the work we're going to be doing is in uh, socially vulnerable communities and it was very difficult to do using federal um, federal databases and such for example Kalihi was not identified as a socially vulnerable community although you know knowing living here, we know that there are areas of Kalihi that are lower income and need more resources. So we had to piece together doing and taking a lot of extra work to try to prove that to EPA. Um, with a tool like this, it would be uh, much more straightforward to be able to demonstrate that in addition to dem actually directing the resources and the work as the, uh, the colleagues from the Climate Commission and Blue Pale Inn mentioned. Thank you so much. Uh, further questions, members? Or can, can I follow up? Yeah. May I follow up with that? Doesn't the Department of Health or Human Services have heat maps where the socioeconomic populations are? And with the census, we have categorized by zip codes, the highest income, highest education, lowest income, lowest education, et cetera. My point is, are we being a bit redundant? Because the heat maps on socioeconomic, the Alice studies are, are superlative as to where these people are and what they're experiencing. Are you sure using all existing database rather than recreating this? 
we, I feel confident that we've been using all existing databases, and that was the pilot or initial program that the University of Hawaii uh, did with the Climate Commission, was looking at all those different databases and trying to put them together, and that's actually what this tool does. And part of it is it's not just income. Socially vulnerable means access to health care. It means contamination in your environment. It means other risks, in, including things like climate change risks, which aren't already included in a lot of these databases. And so far, there's no comprehensive comprehensive single database that focuses on Hawaii. The CDC tried to create something like this called the SVI or the Socially Vulnerable in, uh, Index, but it doesn't apply well here in Hawaii and we've, we've shown that through multiple different studies looking at different groups and rates, things like rates of childhood lead poisoning or other efforts. So what we need is a comprehensive, useful tool that applies to Hawaii and that's what the, the goal of this project as I understand it. Is it also ret retrospective, i.e. the climates that have caused havoc like in Iniki in the 90s, would you have, say, vulnerability of Kauai because Iniki came and did millions of uh, dollars of destruction? I think it, it is more focused on, on models going forward, looking at where the risks are going forward, um, but that would be a technical question. I'd have to defer to um, the yeah. UH team that worked on it and possibly the Climate Commission. Those are hard to predict, actually. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on, if no further questions, to the next bill on the agenda, House Bill 188. This is just appropriating funds to the Carbon Smart Land Management Assistance Pilot Program. We established that uh, by, with a bill that was passed last year, but didn't fund it. Um, so this would just fund that program. And first up to testify is uh, State of Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation Adaptation Commission. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Leah Laramie on behalf of the Climate Change Mitigation Adaptation Commission, send on our testimony and support. Mahalo. Thanks. And then we have DLNR in support. Uh, Pacific Agriculture Land Management Systems in support, Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action in support, we have Hawaii Cattlemen's Council in support and signed up for Zoom but not present, and Hawaii Farm Bureau in support, Nature Conservancy Hawaii in support, the HECA Carbon Sequestration Task Force in support, and additional individual testimonies, seven in support, one in opposition. Anyone else here to testify on this measure? If not, members, any questions? All right, if not, we'll move on to the next bill on the agenda, House Bill 1505, relating to the Hawaii Employer Union Health Benefits Trust Fund. This encourages the EUTF to consider investment opportunities in industries that will sustain Hawaii's natural environment or produce economic opportunities for its residents like renewable energy, um, as an example. Um, first up to testify is uh, the Derek Mizuno Hawaii Employer Union Benefits Trust Fund with comments. We have one individual in opposition and one in support. Anyone else here to testify on this measure? No, nope, there's no one to ask questions of, so we will move on, if that's okay, um, to House Bill. You're looking at me as if I was going to ask a question. <laughs> I just assume. Okay. House Bill 1506, uh, the next bill on the agenda relating to the employee's retirement system of the state of Hawaii. <clears throat> Similarly, this um, requires when evaluating investments to consider opportunities in industries that will sustain Hawaii's natural environment or produce economic opportunities. First up to testify, State of Hawaii Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, Member of the Committee, Leah Laramie at the Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Commission. Stand on our testimony and support. Mahalo. Thanks. We have Director, uh, Department of Budget and Finance with comments. And then the uh, Thomas Williams from the employer, Employees Retirement System with comments. So, hi, come forward. <clears throat> Good morning, Chair Lowen, um, Vice Chair Cochran, and members of the committee. I clearly am not uh, Director Thomas Williams. My name is Kristen Barella. I am the newly appointed Chief Investment Officer for ERS. Uh, with me, I also have uh, Deputy Director Kunoi Margo. We're going to represent Tom on this um, testimony for this bill. I'll be brief in my comments. We did provide testimony, and as drafted, this bill would impose geographic and environmental specific limitations or requirements on investments within these trust assets. 
Uh, as you all are well aware, you all have heard this many times before, we are a defined benefit plan. And as established in Hawaii statute, we serve as a fiduciary to our members, and we must ensure that we're not um, diverting the corpus of our fund for purposes anything other for purposes that are outside of anything other than our exclusive benefit of our members. Uh, additionally, we're prudent investors and accredited investors, and our investment policy holds us to the Uniform Prudent Investment Act, uh, which does require us to invest prudently, which also accounts for broad diversification geographically as well as risk profiles. Um, so uh, our primary focus is to maximize the risk-adjusted return for our members. Um, and as it's currently drafted today, we are concerned that this could be construed as a requirement to invest outside of those parameters or that mission to our members. Um, and while the ES ERS board has not had the opportunity to review this bill because of everything I just mentioned, I do believe and we do believe that they would not support it. However, uh, it's our understanding that this bill is not intended to interfere with our fiduciary duties after conversations with uh, appropriate parties, uh, rather to encourage the expansion of our existing high tip program, which was adopted in state law in 2007. And since the adoption of that program, ERS has supported this, and uh, we also support the expansion of our local economy as well as the environmental sustainability of our local economy. Um, so as such, we respectfully offer amendments to our in our testimony that we would like you to consider. We believe these amendments honor the original intent of this bill without infringing on our fiduciary standard to our, our members. And uh, if these adoptions of amendments were approved or moved forward, we believe our board and our staff would support this bill. Great, thank you. Uh, next is, um, uh, there's one individual in support and one in opposition. Is there anyone else here in person or on Zoom to testify on this measure? If not members, any questions? Rep Ward. Thank you, Chair. Uh, ERS, please. Uh, this is directly at your investment portfolio. What is the average that you have uh, presently going in terms of investment? We in have been, uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Ward, we have been deploying capital into this high tip program since 2008. There's about 117 million committed to this program across three different vehicles thus far. But your overall portfolio investment, return on investment is what percent? Five, six, oh. seven percent? Um, so our required rate of return is a seven percent. That is our discount rate for our liabilities. We've generated well above that in uh, historical uh, implementation. Which means you're doing a good job. Correct. Um, what is the amount of unfunded liabilities of the ERS? Madam Chair and Representative Ward, I'm going to have to look at our... That's in the billions, by the way. <laughs> yeah, between... Name that in billions, please. It's got to be either five, six, seven, or eight billion. And I apologize. When I say newly appointed, I'm a month on the job, oh. so we can get that number for you. <laughs> how, how did we know that? Uh, my point is, if this bill passes and you get pushed further into that, will your return on investment and the increase in the, uh, the unfunded liabilities get even worse? So the allocation for general appropriation funds will assist in the unfunded liabilities um, issue that we're addressing. The amendments will help us prudently invest those monies as soon as we receive them. So, so with we the amendment, you're comfortable? You with the proceed. amendment, we okay. are comfortable supporting this bill. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Chair. Any further questions, members? Okay, we're actually going to take one additional testifier on the first bill on the agenda, House Bill 194, who uh, I did get a message that I didn't see till just now that at the time the bill was being heard, he was having technical difficulties and was trying to get led into the Zoom. So um, I think it's the Appliance Standards Awareness Project. Brian, are you there on Zoom? Yes, Madam Chair, if you can hear me. Yes. Um, I, I really just wanted to apologize. Uh, Brian Fee. With Appliance Standards Awareness Project, I just wanted to apologize for not being able to get into the meeting earlier and uh, potentially answer any questions. It was Zoom technical difficulties, which have been worked out, so I, I will certainly be uh, prompt in the future. Great. Um, I think we had our questions answered, and we did talk about your guys' data, but um, Jody did a good job covering it. So, does anyone specifically have questions for Brian? All right. Thank you so much. Um, or if not, we will recess and we'll come back for decision making at 11.30. Recess.
All right, we are reconvening the Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection 9 a.m. agenda for decision making. First up, we have House Bill 194 relating to efficiency standards. We're going to make some amendments to this. Um, we're going to remove the air purifiers, also called room air cleaners, from this, um, just to kind of take out the, the one semi-controversial part of this. Um, and then per the testimony of the Home Ventilating Institute, we will also amend the bill to clarify that that um, HVI's database can also be used. Uh, and then we'll defect the date and we'll make some technical amendments for clarity, consistency, and style. Defect the date to June 30th, 3000, and we're gonna defect the date to June 30th, 3000 for all the bills on this agenda in case I forget to say it later. Any discussion members? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. All right, uh, voting on HB 194, Chair elects to pass with amendments, Chair and Vice Chair, vote aye. Noting the excused absences of Rep. Gate and Kahaloa. Members, any um, no's or reservations? Seeing none, uh, Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you, and next is House Bill 192, relating to energy efficiency. Uh, this bill, we will just defect the date to June 30th, 3000, and move it forward. Members, any discussion? Direct Chair, forward. did you ascertain that these are subject to this bill? Uh, this bill only takes these bulbs off the shelves for replacement. It doesn't mandate the replacement of ones already in place. I thought we yeah, clarified but, that. But when they burn out, they would have to follow this. Be replaced if it by LEDs, okay. yeah. Okay, good. Unless they had some stash of them, you know, tucked away in a storage room. Because we're not out, we're not making anything illegal. We're so just taking them off the shelves. five years of fluorescent bulbs, they can exhaust them. Or two years of uh, well, the hope, the, hope, the hope is that as replacements, as bills get replaced over time, they'll be replaced with a better option, less toxic That's and more energy efficient. Fair enough. Thank you. Enough. All right. Vote, please, Vice yes. Chair. Thank All you. All right. Okay. Voting on HB 192. Chair elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Excused are Reps Gate and Kahaloa. Members, anyone voting no or with reservations? Seeing none, Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you, Vice Chair. Next is House Bill 441 relating to climate equity. This is the development of the social vulnerability database. Um, per the testimony of the Climate Commission, we're going to direct the appropriations here to the University of Hawaii. And then we will blank out the dollar amounts, but note those um, recommended amounts in the committee report. And then we'll add language to clarify that the development of the database should be coordinated with relevant parties, including those involved in the existing hazard mitigation framework and defect the date. Members, any discussion? Chair, yes. thank you for that last statement in the committee report. That, that I, my, my position is, you know, with reservations, is that I'm not sure that they've mined all the existing data that's out there, and there may be some redundancy, but your last statement, I think, covers that well. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any further discussion? not members. Vice Chair, please take the vote. Voting on HB 441, Chair elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Uh, noting all <coughs> members present. At this time, any no's or with reservations? With reservations. One, as a Mr. Ward. And Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you. Uh, House Bill 188 relating to carbon sequestration. This is just an appropriation for the program we already established. So we're going to blank the dollar amounts out, note them in the committee report, and defect the date. Members, any discussion? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Voting on HB 188, Chair elects to pass with amendments. Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Noting all members present. Any? Are there any no's or with reservations? Chair, seeing none, your measure is adopted. Thank you. And then House Bill 1505 relating to the Hawaii Employer Union Health Benefits Trust Fund. For this bill, we're just going to defect the date and move it forward. Members, any discussion? If not, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Voting on HB 1505, Chair elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote ayes. All members are present. Are there any no's or with reservations at this time? Reservation. Mr. Ward, one with reservations. Chair, your measure is adopted. And then last bill on the agenda, House Bill 1506, relating to the Employees Retirement System of the State of Hawaii. 
Uh, we're going to adopt all the amendments proposed in the testimony from ERS and affect the date on this to June 30th, 3000, and that is all. Any discussion? Chair, did you say the amendments from the ERS are acceptable? Yes. Where they encourage it rather than this mandating it? Okay, exactly. terrific. I've changed my vote. Glad to hear it. Welcome to the club. Um, uh, Vice Chair, if no further discussion, Vice Chair, please take the vote. Voting on HB 1506, Chair elects to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote ayes. And we have all members present. Are there any no's or with reservations? There is not so. Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you, and we are adjourned.